Okay, so we were talking in one of our last videos about how muscles can exist in three states. So you've got normal, you can switch on and off as desired. Hypotonic, they're the muscles that in clinic we'll find as, as weak. Though it's not really weakness, it's just that the brain struggles to engage in that particular movement. Then we have hypertonic muscles or locked muscles, and these are the ones that often are the ones that always feel tight, the ones that don't let go if you're trying to stretch them or you're getting them massaged, uh, nothing changes. Now people in clinic always ask why muscles become hypertonic, and simply put, it's because um, the brain is effectively scared to let those muscles go and relax. It's worried that if it does that, it won't be able to control the movement that whatever those muscles are involved in to try and help. Because that tightness is put there as a compensation by the brain to help your body function better, your musculoskeletal system function better. Now, over our lifetimes, we kind of experience lots of injuries, and often these injuries can kind of leave a remnant of kind of adaptation behind, or things don't exactly go back to how they should be. Now, I'm not talking tissue damage, because obviously tissue damage uh, is usually gone within a couple of months, depending how bad the damage is. I'm talking about um, how your body, how your brain and central nervous system use your body to move around. So you'll often see people, as they walk along, they're not moving symmetrically from side to side. They'll have a leg they favour, or they'll always hold one shoulder higher than the other. And that they're all usually compensations due to old injuries they've picked up, or remnants of things that are still in their system. And the hypertonic muscles are just a part of those patterns. So what we can do in clinic, and we have techniques to establish whether something is hypertonic or not, is go looking for what returns those hypertonic muscles to normal. Because if we can do that, then um, the things that are always tight will no longer feel tight. So you, uh, that discomfort immediately will go away. Uh, more than that, we can find and kind of find a pattern and the different stimuli that they're involved in responding to to see why that tightness is there in the first place. Because it doesn't matter um, if something's tight so much as we want to know why it's there. Because if we can change why it's there, we can stop it coming back.